What note is my toothbrush? First of all, we should all agree what a musical note is. That definition will do. The keyword here is vibrates. You might think that the manufacturer has that information on their website, but all that's there is stuff like this. Aside from being vague, what if you have an old toothbrush? You're putting this thing in your mouth every day, hopefully. What if it's what if it's not even on key? You don't have to spend a lot of money or find someone with a perfect ear. You just need a little ingenuity. We're gonna use resonance. Obviously, you're going to need your toothbrush, a digital scale, a length of string, and a marker. Now, the digital scale needs to be accurate enough that you can weigh the length of string that you have. I chose to make my string one meter long, and that's going to be important later because you're going to need to know uh, both how uh, heavy the string is per unit length and how heavy your tooth, how heavy your toothbrush is. All right. The good news is is that the math for this one isn't too complicated. But if that looks scary, let's do a quick breakdown. First of all, frequency is just the vibratiness of the thing that you're trying to figure out. All right, that's what we're trying to find. Frequency, vibratiness, cool, good. N, when N shows up, it just means an integer number. An integer number of what? In this particular case, it happens to be the harmonic number. A harmonic is, um, the way that uh, a thing is vibrating. So for instance, if I have just a short piece of string and I'm vibrating it around or circling it around, you see that there's one lump. This is called the first harmonic. If on the other hand, I kind of vibrate it faster, this is so hard. If, if, uh, oh, it was there. If I, um, oh, that was it. There it is. Okay, so that would be the second harmonic. You see there's kind of two lumps. When something is vibrating just right, um, the wave travels up and bounces back and they add to each other and it's really cool. What we'll need to count is the number of lumps. That's the harmonic that it's in. Next, we have T. T is for tension. We're going to be hanging this from, um, hanging our, our toothbrush from the string and the tension is just how darn heavy this thing is. Mu. Ooh, Greek letters, spooky. Mu is uh, just. Uh, the mass per unit length. So it's just how heavy this is, you know, measure it and write it down. And then I say, okay, that, that's how big it is. And it's one meter long. So I get a good sense of, of how much stuff is in each little spot. Okay. And the only other variable is the length. And the length is going to end up being the length between where we're holding it and where it's hanging down. All right. Measuring, measuring stuff. Always keep track of your measurement error, kids. Measuring this in grams. Zero it out. I need to write stuff down. Ah! 164.3 plus or minus 0.1 grams. We also need to weigh our string. 1.3 grams plus or minus 0.1 gram per meter. Get your string and tie it around the head of your toothbrush. We turn it on. Right now it's vibrating, but you don't see any particular nodes or anything happening. How am I supposed to count the nodes? What you end up doing is sliding your fingers down. And when it is at just the right length, the wave that bounces back from my finger will add to the wave that's coming from here again, and it'll zoom out. It'll kind of spread out, and you'll be able to see that really well. And if I just, you have to go slow, Oh, look at that. Oh, the second harmonic. Do you see that? It's on resonance. If I slide my finger up, nothing. Come right down there, boom. So then, with your teeth, you gotta mark it where it's not moving. See where it's not moving? Mark it where it's not moving at your finger, and then kind of at the bottom there. Oh, oh, it's timing me. It's timing me, but you see that? All right, but my toothbrush has two settings. Let's do the other setting. Oh, I need a different color. Different color marker. Oh, it's lower. See, hear that? Sounds lower. Slowly come down near it. There it is. You see that? You see it? Oh, maybe not. Swing into 
There we go. See, it's a little, it's a little different, okay? It's close, so it's similar. It's up here, and about there. See it? See it? Sweet, let's stop that irritating noise. I think my, my toothbrush is probably off key. I think my, tooth, my toothbrush is off key. We need to know the length of the string, right? Yeah. This was the untied bit, so I put a little mark next to the head there. Anyway, let's measure this business. Let's measure this business. Uh, metric system, because we're lazy. Let's call it 151 millimeters. Or 15.1 centimeters. Two nodes. Let's do, let's do the other one. That's, that's at 155. And the stretchiness here, I'd say plus or minus. Or minus 0.2. Let's plug it in. That was fun. Now we do it to make sure I actually get an answer. Okay. So I'm going to my favorite Wolfram Alpha here to plug in the numbers. But before I do that, I need to convert all of my recorded values into the correct scientific units, so grams to kilograms and centimeters to meters. Now, I will take the aforementioned math equation stuff and drop in these values. So tension goes here, mass per unit length goes here, and length of the string goes down here on the bottom. Also, I need to substitute in that n, and since we got two nodes, we'll plug in the number two. Finally, if I take this and plug it in to Wolfram Alpha, I get only 73 hertz. That seems far too small. Um... Okay, so I was doing my editing and it really bothered me that the sound of my toothbrush seemed so much higher than the actual 70 or so hertz that I came up with, which sounds like that. Way, way lower. That's actually the vibration driving frequency of the toothbrush, but what I realized was that along with the driving frequency, there was a harmonic, just like there was a harmonic that set up when the string had the wave that went up and bounced down from end to end of the acrylic uh, toothbrush here. That was a little bit closer to this. Now if I play both of them together, you can hear that they sound a little bit more what the actual toothbrush sounds like. So in case anyone was watching and just really bothered by the fact that it didn't sound very much like the tone of my toothbrush, probably what you were hearing was that my microphone was really only picking up the higher harmonics rather than the actual driving frequency of my toothbrush. Alright, we're right around. 70. Oh. oh! Oh, 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 It's a D flat. It's a D flat. Well, it's a D. It's between a D and a D flat. Kinda. My toothbrush is a D flat, but, uh, since you can science it, tell me what note yours is. And as always, in the- oh, yuck. And as always, in the description is a link to my blog where I detail the steps here today, including the measurement error.